And like I said, Anna Peters is joining us. She is a salon owner in California, has been licensed for over two decades and was a Red Chin educator for over a decade. She specializes in um, bridal styling, editorial work, finishing, color. Anna does it all and her aesthetic is so beautiful. So let's welcome Sam Via Art Team member, Anna Peters. Hi, Katie. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We're Thank so you. happy to have you. <laughs> Thank you for that sweet intro. I'm so happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, let's learn some styling from you. I will cut you loose. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I see we have people from all over on here. Thank you so much for joining. I just want to start off today. We're going to be talking about simple ways to get glam styles. So when you think of glam hair, what do you think of? Type it in the comments below so I can see your answers. And I can't wait to see what you guys say because, whoops, because um, we did this on our Instagram yesterday and I'm sure a lot of the same things are gonna be popping up, same answers. So type in the comments below what glam hair means to you. What comes to mind? And today I'm going to be sharing um, how to create glam waves and a very simple, quick, easy glam upstyle that you can move from a down look to an upstyle. I love um, giving my brides and clients the opportunity to wear multiple looks. And so if you can give them that option, that just elevates the value of your service. Okay, great. We see Hollywood waves. Finger waves, classic pinup, curls, elegance, beautiful and flowing. All of these are wonderful. What do you guys think of the finishes of um, glam styles? Are they usually more matte or are they usually more shiny? What are you guys seeing out there? And I'm just going to start taking some sections here. We're going to be creating these extremely easy, look at these waves, guys. These are glam waves, right? Would you agree? Show some hearts if you like this. Shiny, yes. When I think of glam, I think of shiny hair. Not the matte, not the lived in kind of rough look. It's usually more shiny, more polished is what we were hearing. More put together, flawless. And so these waves were created using the single waver, our newest tool to Sambia. And look at that barrel. This is what's creating these waves in one simple step. Have you guys struggled with creating this type of wave? I know I have. And for a long time, I was having a hard time getting these to sit in perfectly together. And once I picked up this tool and started playing with it, my mind was blown on how easy it was to create this look. So we're going to do so by, I did half the head for you already, but I'm going to show you the other half. And the way we, we approach this is by taking zigzag sections. What that's going to do for us is going to make it easy for us to hide the separation in our sectioning. So when we take a zigzag section, when these come together, they're going to easily flow into each other. It's all about just lining up the barrel so that we could get the waves sitting exactly where they need to be. So from the back, here's what it looks like. We have half of the back done, and I'm going to be mirroring that wave pattern on this opposite side. So the first thing we're going to do is section out our hair. What makes styling simple is when we have a game plan. What makes it challenging is when we don't know where to start. We get lost along the way. Things aren't turning out how we like. And so what I've discovered by working with these kind of blueprints in styling, it helps so much to eliminate all of that frustration and, um, hard times of trying to get the look that you're wanting to create. So we're gonna start here in the back. You can see that there's a zigzag parting. 
happening from one half of the back to the other side. I'm going to continue taking zigzag partings, moving my comb up and down. And when we work with clean sections purposely, not just grabbing random areas of hair, we're gonna get better results. So we're gonna go in with this tool at a diagonal. Before we go in, we're taking a hairspray. I'm using Redken's Triple Take. It's the strongest hold, and I'm spraying the section before I go in with the tool. Now, she's already been prepped with a blow dry, um, big blowout from Redken that has heat protection in it. So I'm gonna go in now with this iron. I'm gonna turn her so you can see the angle a little bit. Everything is placed at a diagonal because diagonal lines give us what kind of effect? Type it in the comments. I'm gonna go this way so you guys can see. Combing through our section before we place the iron, holding that hair nice and tight, placing our iron in, add a diagonal, and then just compressing. Now a lot of times what happens is we could get a hard line, and that can happen with any hot tool. It happens um, by the way that we are holding the tool. It's not the tool, it's the way we're holding the tool. So if we go in with the curling iron, we compress and we bend up, we're gonna get the same hard line as we would with any hot tool where we're compressing in that level, that spoon is pressing against the hair. So to avoid that, we're going to pull away. We're gonna round with the tool and just drop that down. Look at how beautiful these waves are. Now my ends are going to be going in the same direction that the barrels are going. So again, if I hold on to the hair and I pull the ends in the opposite direction, we're gonna get hard lines. So these are problems that have popped up for myself and I know other stylists as well when going in and creating any type of wave. We want these flawless, beautiful, polished curls, and sometimes those hard lines from the spoon or from the compression can happen. So I want you to pay attention to how you're holding that tool. Let me get a little bit closer so I could show you. We're going to first spray the hair. This is going to help lay down all of the flyaways getting it nice and smooth and polished, combing through both sides of the hair, going in with our hot tool, in this case, a single waver from Samvia, and look how deep that barrel is. I love this tool. Now going in, getting that hair in there, holding it tight. I have it placed at a diagonal on the section I'm compressing. I'm going to turn away and my ends are going to follow. And that's going to just polish out that top barrel. Again, holding those ends down so they go with the wave. And my top is bending just a little bit out. It's going to increase that wave pattern and really make sure that you don't get any of those hard lines. So kind of just massaging that and bringing that in. Now look how these start to stack up on each other. You could just put those right together and we'll bring them all together at the end. But look how easily we're creating this beautiful polished wave pattern. Now before I would go in with my curling iron I would do a curl set all over the head. I would clip the curls, wait for them to cool, unclip them, unravel them one by one, and then try to get them to lay in this pattern. So this is saving a huge amount of time for me from not having to do all of those steps. And these waves last forever and are so shiny. 
So you want to pay attention when you're going in with your tool where you're going to be placing your first wave because we want them to sit on top of each other. We want these waves to hug each other. So I'm going to hold this hair out and I'm working backwards here so you guys can see. So excuse my awkward positioning sometimes, but I wanna make sure you can see. So I'm gonna go in, I'm using the camera as my mirror right now. You would be using your mirror at home or at your station. And I'm gonna make sure that I am getting that set right in there. So that's where my first one's going. My ends are going down and I'm polishing that top wave, really kind of getting that started. Pulling that out, you could see that'll just pop right into there. Going in right where I left off underneath. Compressing, bringing those ends down and under. How easy is this? Are you guys shocked at how beautiful these waves are coming out so quickly, so easily? It was very exciting when I <laughs> created these waves the other day and was just so happy to see that we have something to share that is going to save you time. It's going to take away frustration in trying to get those perfect waves. And it's going to be so much fun for you guys to create on your, your clients. So going in, spraying the hair first, combing through, you see how that just smooths out the hair. So every step we're doing is setting us up for success. I used to just take the hair, comb through. I never was putting the spray on first. I would use a heat spray, but the hair spray is really helping me to get some more hold on these waves. Through. And you could just see how that starts to sit in there. Now, the thicker your section, the softer your wave's gonna be. So keep in mind that if you want consistent waves, you need to be taking consistent sections. Now what's awesome about this tool is that just like all of our other tools, Electrics, it has the automatic shut off. So when I'm working in the salon on clients all day, it stays hot and ready for me. When I forget to turn it off and I go home, I know that it automatically will shut off after 60 minutes of not being used. So that is very helpful. Um, and it just really helps save the tool's life too and just shutting off automatically and not staying on all night long. What do you guys think so far about these waves? We're gonna move to the front and I'm gonna show you how to get that front view going. But look at how beautiful these are. The shine is incredible. All right, drop some questions down in the comments for me on what you guys are needing help with when it comes to glam styles. What are some things that pop up for you when you're styling and trying to get that really polished look that you could use some help with? Because today I want to help you with that solution and make sure that you get the answers that you're needing. I know for me, sometimes it's, um, you know, switching up the part last minute. Maybe she starts with the center part and later in the evening we want to go to a side part. So how do we do that without disrupting everything? We're gonna go through and just create this side part. And I'm gonna show you how easily you can just redirect that hair without messing up the rest of your look. So we're gonna use a targeted volume mousse from Redken Guts. Redken Guts is a targeted volume mousse that I can easily spray right here at the root area. And I know that it's not gonna get all over. I'm going to comb this through my section. 
To redirect hair into a different direction that we're wanting it to lay, we need to get it wet and we need to dry it in the opposite direction. So this mousse is going to act as our, our water. It's getting the hair wet and then we're going to be able to redirect it from there. So picking up just that section of hair, I'm going to use the Sambia nine row brush. This is going to give me the most amount of tension. I'm going to place this hair into the brush just like that. And on low, I'm going to use the nozzle of our Sambia light ionic blow dryer and I'm going to just dry this root area straight up. Now this is so that we don't disrupt the rest of the hair. So if you need to work out a calic or change the direction of a part, this is a great way to go in. Even after you've already done the style or you're moving into second look to go in and change that direction. So using the bristles, and you can see how smooth the back of the brush is, that is just going to lay nicely over that other hair and not disrupt what we created underneath. You can see that volume is, is now in there. So just taking little bite-sized pieces and making it really easy for us to redirect the root. I'm gonna scoot her over and show you how we can now pull this hair over and get it to sit right there on top. So again, going in with the triple take. Combing through our section, getting all those little hairs and flyaways laying down into the hair. Taking the single waver, you can see right there, and we're going to just slide that right in. Now I'm going to just hold these ends and rock that wave right there at the base. These ends are coming underneath so that they don't get creased. Going in where we left off, holding those ends down, and just rocking that wave again. Sometimes you gotta slow down to speed up. We've all heard that. And this is definitely a way to be more methodical about what we're doing. It goes very quickly. We're gonna get beautiful waves super quick but taking our time and making sure that we are placing the hair exactly where we want it. And then those waves will just go right into to there. All right, let me finish off this side and then I'm gonna take you into her second look of the evening. Hi, Katie. Oh, we have a question. Oh, Katie, I can't hear you. Sorry, you're on mute. Oops. Yeah, we had a few questions come in. I was saying this is looking lovely. So um, do you ever back comb under when you're doing glam waves underneath the section? Yeah, definitely. First, I'm just going and creating the waves, but then to set everything and make sure that it's all staying together and laying correctly, we're going to go in and do a little back combing underneath there to kind of marry them all together. Great questions, keep them coming. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go from the front so you could see my sectioning. I'm going in with the tail comb. I'm just drawing a zigzag on her part or on her scalp. So it should look like this, your sectioning. And what that's gonna do is not have any hard lines when we go to blend our waves together. It's gonna to give it a much softer, more natural result. You guys know what I'm talking about when you would take the curls out and all of the partings would be separated and you're trying to 
blend those all without disrupting your curls that you work so hard to create. So try, even when you're working with the curling iron, taking zigzag sectioning or diagonal parts. Okay, great. So we're going in with hairspray first, holding the hair tight, combing that through. Going in with our hot tool and paying attention to where our waves are sitting in the back. We want to make sure that we are blending those together. So make sure your hair is nice and tight. Go in with the tool and lining up that barrel so that your waves are gonna line up together, bringing those ends underneath. And you can see I'm turning the iron towards me, out a little bit towards me. Grabbing that hair from where we left off. And then rocking towards you, the ends are coming underneath. Now this has four different heat settings. So depending on the client's hair, you could set that. I have it on the hottest setting right now, which is at 430. So here's 430, we have 390, 360, 320, and 280. And you just simply press this button to move the temperature up and down. I love the tool too because of these nice rounded edges. So it really eliminates those, those hard lines even more. Okay, going in, we're gonna do two more sections, a zigzag at the scalp. Combing through our section. Getting all those hairs laying nice and neat. Leave no hair behind. Again, dropping it down to where we want to see our first wave. Line up. Compress, rock that iron out towards you and those ends underneath. Drop that down to the next wave. And continue all the way down to the end. Now it's up to you if you want to leave the ends straight or if you want to create a little bevel at them. You can see those just pop right into each other. And our last section here. Gathering that hair. Placing that iron in. Compressing, massaging that top barrel out towards you. Dropping that down, compressing. Ends come underneath. Now, when we don't spray the hair, it's, it can have the tendency to move around in the barrel a little bit more because of the slip on the hair. So if you're finding that the hair is going sideways, one, either the tension on your section, holding it with your hand is not there, or the hair needs some grip. It needs some, some spray of some sort to really help it stay together. Okay, so there we have the second side. I'm gonna give you a little tour all the way around. Look at how beautiful and so quick and easy. This would have taken me twice as long, if not more, 
networking the way I was before. So we are always evolving. We're always keeping our mind open to new ways of doing things and discovering new ways to make what we do more efficient and um, easier, either on our bodies or um, on our, our time, because time is money, right? If we take twice as long to do a client, we could do less clients. Now I'm just going in underneath and just gently teasing that hair. So I'm not disrupting the waves, just going in and just doing a little tease underneath. That's just gonna fluff them out a little bit. And we're gonna move to the side here, start bringing these together. Just a little bit of a teasing going in and just picking up these sections that we want to come together. Using the tail of her comb to just kind of lay those hairs down. You can spray once you get it in where you're wanting and just using your hand to kind of really massage those waves in place. Now another fun look we could create too, we could go from glam to a really boho look super easily with these waves by just the way we touch them. So just bringing these together. So our glam look is going to be more polished, shiny, put together, where if we want to move this into more of a frothy, boho kind of texture, we can take it there really easily. Let me just get this front set up for you. Getting these waves to lay right where we want them to. Little tease at the scalp. Little spray. How are we doing out there? What was one thing you've learned so far about the single waiver in creating these waves? Type it in the comments. I want to make sure I'm doing my job and that you guys are walking away with something valuable today. Everyone is loving this look, Anna. I love the tip about the hairspray and like rocking the iron towards you yeah. before you compress. That Perfect. was like mind blown. Awesome. So there's her finished waves. Yay. I want one. You could get one online. <laughs> also online, guys, check out our education catalog. We have all the descriptions of the classes that you could book for us to come into your salons and teach live. We're so excited about this opportunity to come see you guys in your salons, in your space and share everything we can with you. So if you like these online classes, you'll love the in-person live classes. So check it out, book us. I'd love to come see you. We're gonna move this into the second look now. Are you guys ready for a quick up style? First, let's have a little bit of fun really quick. This is how we're gonna blouse out this wave pattern to get this kind of boho look. So I want you to just take your fingers and just pinch and start making that real frothy kind of wave. Pinch and pull. This is like that angelic, beautiful, natural wave pattern that's got a little bit of fluff and frizz to it. I love how natural hair is the trend now. So while we have glam waves, we could also create a really natural type of wave by just the way we manipulate the hair. 
and the product that we use. So for Glam, we talked about it being very shiny and polished. For a more lived in boho look, I'd go with a dry texture spray. That's gonna really kind of give more of a matte and rougher finish to the hair, more lifted. So look at how soft those just became just by using our fingers and massaging that hair, separating it, giving a really airy, frothy look. So there's so many looks we can create with this tool just by switching the direction we place it as well. I love going in in opposite directions. So I'll go in one section horizontal and the other section vertical. And that's going to give me a natural effect of different waves, just like you would find on somebody with naturally wavy hair. Okay, so here's our nice frothy wave pattern. You can boho it up with a beautiful hair piece. And look at what a transition that goes from glam to boho. See, she's still a little glammy boho, but love the, the options that we have with this tool. Okay, so first section we're going to do with our, our quick up style. I want you guys to remember this as a blueprint. Put this in your back pocket as you need to put somebody's hair up really quick. You want something that you know is going to work. We're going to start at the top of the part, and we're going to just go zigzag line to the opposite side corner of the nape. So let me isolate this so you guys can see the parting. And this is an easy one to just draw out on a piece of paper really quick too, so you can remember. So from the, the top side part, we went diagonally across the back of her head to the opposite side corner of the nape. From here, we're going to use a ponytail foundation to condense this side of the head, pulling it back, determining where we would like the, um, the focus to be. So you can see these waves as we pull them back the texture that we get. This really beautiful texture is already placed in there. So gathering this hair, we're gonna have a side kind of chignon happening back here. So I'm gonna just determine where on her face shape this would look best. Do we want it lower? Do we want it higher? When you determine that, that is where you're going to place a ponytail. So just using a clear elastic, we're going to go in and place a ponytail here. This is going to be the anchor that's going to provide all the strength for this up style. So a lot of times we run into situations where we're trying to put the hair up and we're using 5 million bobby pins because the hair is not holding, especially if they have a ton of hair. We are... Um, losing the, the look, the volume, all of that, because we just keep pinning. And at that point, we're just praying, right? We're praying it works. How many of you have prayed before that your, your hair turns out to the hair gods? So dropping down that other side now, we're moving this back into this opposite side. So I want you to see from the front, I'm making sure that the front looks good and I'm crossing this hair over the back ponytail. So just like that. So it's going to cross over. So you're just going to be holding this, raking through the hair. You have all the texture and all the volume there already. So your job is done in that, and you know that that's going to be a beautiful texture on the hair. I love doing this for her second look or even just um, a first look. You already have that wave pattern in there. If she wanted her hair up first and to drop it down later, you know that you have that wave pattern in there, that it's going to work out when you drop the hair. 
going to be a little bit messier of a wave, but it'll be still beautiful. Okay, just moving this hair back. I'm going to clip that down because we're getting a little bit of a pop there from the volume. Once we have that hair, let's move that over. Okay, there we go. Get that out of our way. You guys can see perfect. Crossing this over our ponytail. So again, I usually would be standing directly behind it, but I want you guys to be able to see. So you would be standing directly behind your mannequin. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to twist the opposite way we're gonna cross. So our hair is going to twist away to the right and I'm crossing over to the left. Twist to the right, cross over to the left. Twist to the right, cross to the left. Twist to the right, cross to the left. So this is a giant rope braid that we're creating. And our foundation that we're gonna pin into is sitting directly underneath. And we have a very clear idea of where we're going because we have that foundation already set up. So we're going to tie this off. So it's acting as our blueprint, laying the foundation for the look, for the density of the hair, for the direction you want the hair to move is all part of the plan in making these looks come together so easy and quickly for you. So if you crossed opposite than what you were, if you twisted opposite of the direction you were crossing, your twist should stay together like this. This is a rope braid. If you're just twisting the hair, it will unravel if you tie it off and you're going to be um, messing with that as it, um, as you're playing with it, twisting it up, it's going to be coming undone. So using the rope braid pattern is going to help hold that all together. So just blousing that out a little now. We're gonna just twist right on top of our ponytails right here. So we're gonna just twist right on top of there. Holding that with our fingers, we're gonna go in and we're going to pin directly down into that foundation. You're placing the pin straight into the head and then going horizontally across into that ponytail. And you want to place pins where your fingers are holding the hair. That's going to really help for you to know where you need that strength. And when you pin into that foundation, you could feel the strength and the hair locking in place. From there, we're just going to go through and start to blouse out this twist. And look how easily we've created her second look in no time, right? So this is something that you can practice, get the pattern down, get the blueprint down, and then you know how quick you can create this look for your clients and can get more looks done in less time. That's how we are able to make more money. <laughs> Making the clients happy, making sure that we're able to deliver, we're not wasting time trying to figure out where the hair goes, how to make it strong. Having these things practiced and in your back pocket is what's going to really set you apart and make it so much easier for you. And then because of those foundations, we're able to really blouse out these looks. Inching and pulling, and look at that beautiful texture that's already in the hair. Thank you, Miranda. <laughs> All right. So just finishing that off, making sure that everything is secure, and then accessorizing, right? How do we want to dress up 
this glam up style. It's so quick and easy to just create these looks and, and accessorize that it takes it to a whole nother level. So just sticking one of these beautiful pins in takes it to an elevated glam look. Having these accessories on hand, maybe your bride didn't have one or somebody in the bridal party. I love having these on hand. Um, you can find them anywhere on Amazon or at any hair supply store. They don't cost a lot, but you showing up with them and being able to dress up their look is going to make your work look better and make them happier too. So it's always worth you could charge them for it. You could include it into your price. But look how beautiful that is. All right. So first we went in with the single waver, creating these beautiful glam waves. What were some ahas we had with working with the single waver and creating these waves? Type them in the comment box. From here, you could just determine how you want this front to lay. And then after we created the waves, we married all the sections together. And then moved into our second look real quick. I think that probably took five minutes. <laughs> so how much can you get done in five minutes, right? That's the goal. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys got something out of this today. And I hope that this really helps you approaching glam styling, simplifies it. Let's see, what's this question? It was Everything from how you parted, rock the tool, lined up the waves, it all made it come together so beautifully. Thank you so much, Miranda. I'm so glad you caught that. And that is something that's going to make it a lot easier for you. Hopping in between clients, the results of this waiver is so cool. You'll love it. I can't wait for you guys to try it out yourself um, and play around with it a little. It takes time when you're trying out a new tool. So we never want to just go in with it first time and um, you know form an opinion. <laughs> Sometimes it takes time to practice getting the hair in the direction we want, practice with different products, different approaches, and just keeping an open mind to trying new things. So please check it out, get one yourself, and you will not regret having this in your toolkit because I've never been able to create waves that polished and that fast. Awesome. I love this look, Anna. My aha was also watching you like gather the hair in yeah. the nape and like using your entire forearm um, so organically to like manipulate the hair. I love that. I love watching hairdressers who style a lot, your delicate hands just. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like really working with soft hands helps so much because if we have like strong hands, strong grips, we're really um, manipulating the hair with the heat from our hand and um, how it's going to lay. So yeah, soft hands when you're styling will definitely help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I know everyone in the comments is showing you so much love. So thank you for these beautiful fast looks. I am a big fan of a rope braid. So yeah. Oh, it's so you could do it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me, Katie. Thank you, Anna. You guys, make sure you give her a follow. Her handle is pinned on her name card, Anna's Hair Retreat. Give her a follow. Slide into her DMs if you have any questions or if you want to book her for an in-salon class. Anna is on our art team and we have an entirely new curriculum designed with new classes. So check out the comments for where to get this info on our website. And you can email us at education at sambia.com. But thank you, Anna. We thank will see you. Everyone. Have a great day.